So, I mean, if Andy Cohn called you and said, would you ever consider being a Real Housewife of New York, Susan? Well, I would work for Andy any time, any place. I would, I never thought about being a housewife of, of anywhere, but um, I would give it a whirl. For Andy, of course, I would give it a whirl. What about, you know, Eileen Davidson and like Lisa Rinna just did, they just did Days of Our Lives, Beyond Salem. It was like a week long streaming. It was like a reboot of some sorts. It was for a week. Yeah. And it was Days of Our Lives and it was a lot of the original cast. Do you wow. think, and it did really well in the streaming ratings, however that works. Like, do you think, is All My Children prime for a week long beyond Pine Valley? Well, you know, that's, I, I didn't know that about Days of Our Lives um, and they are wonderful. Uh, Eileen Davidson and Elisa Rinna. Um, there has been no talk of that as far as I know. Um, I'm somebody who doesn't like to talk about something until I'm on the set actually doing it, but it was leaked that there is a show in the works um, called Pine Valley that Kelly Ripa and Mark Consuelos will be producing. And um, that sounds really interesting because it's, it's, it's very, very cleverly done and it, it, it takes uh, into account uh, the characters who the audience loves and it puts some new characters in there that keeps it very fresh. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see if that really goes. And if it goes, you'll be a part of this. Erica Kane will be a part of it. They tell me, yes. And I told them, yes, I'm interested. If they were going to make a movie on your life, like if you look at, you know, like an Ariana Grande or like some of these like, you know, younger actresses, they wanted to cast you with like, you know, like in your beginning of your career when you started, like, is there any actress that comes to the top of your mind where you're like, she could play Susan Lucci? Well, you know, when I saw it, when I watch Ariana Grande on The Voice, it does occur to me. I think she would be very good. Uh, the other one, um, who has struck me, who would be good to play me would be, um, would be uh, Camila Carbello. Camila Carbello, yeah. Uh, both of them would, would have a lot of uh, juice, <laughs> I think. Do you read, you know, from all those times that, you know, all those years, do you have like a high that sticks out of like all of Erica's storylines? Is there one or two that are just like, that, those are your favorites? Oh, you know, Erica was a really busy character. I was a really lucky actress. Uh, so on a really light note, the other thing that Ag I mean, Agnes was so groundbreaking, Agnes Nixon, who created All My Children and Erica Kane. But she, I mean, as far as I know, before Agnes, there was no real glamour either on daytime television. There was no humor, there was no glamour. It was just a lot of drama, wonderful drama, but she and she also brought in glamour and, and humor. But she had um, the first really uh, light storyline that I loved was a very glamorous one where Erica was a model. And she, I remember that we also went out, out on location and that was unheard of. We shot all over New York City. Um, it was December, it was freezing. Uh, I was in little tiny dresses and uh, lying on marble, something with a fountain outside of Lincoln Center and up on top of the fountain in front of the Plaza Hotel. And I was in a little chiffon dress and the men below me, I could see them on Fifth Avenue. They were selling chestnuts. They had on parkas. It was some of my best acting <laughs> because I had to be all you know happy and smiling like nothing was there um, in terms of the cold weather. But it was so much fun coming down the steps, the grand staircase at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I mean, I had some wonderful, really wonderful experiences. And also the hair and makeup was very high fashion. And that was very fun. It was fun. You know, this was a fantasy come true. This was exciting to do. Um, and then there were the, of course, the more serious storylines, um, which, you know, as an actress, I was very grateful to have too. Uh, Two of them involved Bianca at different ages. The one actually that won the Emmy for was the um, the uh, time where the the eleven year old Bianca uh, came was saying that she had anorexia, and we did an intervention. Uh, the I would say the storyline that I'm most proud of is when the sixteen year old Bianca came out to Erica, and. 
Agnes and her writers wrote this storyline in real time. So it was a two year journey and uh, it was so well, so well done, so well cast. I love Eden Regal who played Bianca and it had impact. It had impact on the, on the, the world. It, so. it did. Like, I mean, as a gay man and a member of the gay community and like, you know, I have a ton of lesbian friends. Like that's the first thing they say when I told them I was speaking to you, they're like, you have to talk about Bianca. And I mean, that storyline just still stands out to people. Thank you. I mean, you know, you also had some food fights and you wrestled a bear <laughs> and you buried some people in the backyard. I mean, th there were those stories too, of course. <laughs> which, were, which were wonderful and so much fun. I mean, when they told me I was going to fight a grizzly bear and win, I thought oh, I, I would try anything in rehearsal. I always will, always do with. And uh, at the time, I just remember saying to Jackie Babin, who was our producer at the time, we were way up north in, uh, in Canada. Uh, about two and a half hours north of of uh, of Toronto in a place called Peterborough, I think it was, and it was on the on the Great Lakes. And anyway, it was a very hot, humid July day, and um, there was the bear and his trainer. Wow. And uh, I said to Jackie, "So I'm going to fight this grizzly bear and win." And she said, yeah, just try it. And I said, don't you think we've gone too far this time? She said, no, just try it. So I said, of course, okay, I'll try it. Anyway, the bear was being kept cool in a stream. And then the trainer got the bear out and he was groaning. He did not want to work. And I'm thinking, oh, great. <laughs> How am I going to win this? And anyway, I tried it. They that was it. And we did the scene and um, it turned out to be a, a classic, I think, in the fans um, delight level. They really loved it. It's just like, what's happening, Erica? Of course, she's going to win against a bear. Like that makes total <laughs> sense, right? I mean, <laughs> what was there anything, you know, like I know you also dealt with like you guys had the first legal abortion on TV, which was another like really serious storyline. Mm -hmm. What about was there anything that jumped the shark or was it the bear where you're just like, I think we went too far here, guys. Like I, I need to speak to someone. Yeah, I, I, I um, it, it, well, there was a, a time where I think when Phil came back from Vietnam and he wanted Erica to be barefoot and pregnant all the time. And there were actually scenes where Erica was ripping out ads from the newspaper about houseplants. And I remember thinking, this just not, and I would say, I said, you know, I'm, I'll do this, but this does not seem like Erica at all. And uh, in fact, she um, didn't stay in that chained in place for very long. She, she went up going to New York and resuming her modeling career and burst into song in Brandon Kingsley's office, Kingsley's office, you know, New York, New York, that's where she belonged. 